this is an in-depth video review of the stone edition of the art school Tanakh. Um, in this video I'll be presenting to you the single large volume and the three volume slipcase travel edition. Um, Torah, the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Kitavim. So that's uh, Tanakh is an acronym for that. The Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings. So this follows the the Jewish ordering of the books. Um, the prophets containing Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the twelve minor prophets, as well as Psalms, Proverbs, uh, Job, etc., including Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, and it ends with Chronicles. Um, if you're in the market for a good English Hebrew Tanakh. Uh, this this should be one of your top choices, and I'll explain a few reasons why here. Um, you're you're probably interested more in a good English translation because most of us are more fluent in English than we are in Hebrew, uh, so we need that to guide us. So this is actually a very accurate English translation. Um, it's one of my favorites. One of the one of the main things is that whenever it translates the four-letter name of God, the Tetragrammaton, it doesn't translate it, it actually presents us with Hashem, um, which means in Hebrew the name, as opposed to other translations that might have Lord or Eternal or something along those lines. Um, it is a non-critical translation. A critical edition would be something like a JPS that's uh, comparing variant texts from all over the world not understanding the context that those texts were written in, or potentially the the groups with their influences that in their in their their motives behind writing those texts. Um, some some texts from critical editions are actually from uh, Genizas, or in other words, a storage place where text, whenever they were written, when they were being scribed, they or whenever they were proof read, did not contain the right wording, the right letters, the right vowels, and they had to be put away and they couldn't be destroyed. So stuff like that gets included in critical editions. Whereas this is a, uh, it's a good rabbinic translation, and I say that in that the translation is based on the tradition of Hebrew definitions that have been preserved through the yeshivas all across the world, um, and these rabbinic translations have actually uh, been used by Christian translations for thousands of years. Um, so we actually have a little bit of rabbinic commentary at the bottoms of the pages. It's not very extensive. There's other, there's other versions you can get from Ark Scroll that has more extensive commentary. But you'll find some, some, some comments by uh, some major rabbis like Rashi and Rambam, uh, the Vilna Gaon, and others. Um, as I said, it follows the Jewish ordering of the books. Um, you'll find some English marginal notes. Uh, some There are some Hebrew marginal notes as well, but you'll find more English. Um, so, jumping over to the Hebrew, the Hebrew text follows the traditional synagogue text such as what you would find in a synagogue uh, to be publicly read. Uh, so it follows the, the tradition, the scribal tradition. Um, the traditional texts such as the, the Mikraot Gedolot and the, the proper vowelization and grammatical signs and trope. Um, it's divided, uh, the Torah is divided up into the standard weekly parsha and haftorah portions, so the haftorah portions being back in the Torah and the, uh, the, the prophets and the writings. Um, you actually have in the text, you'll see the kitiv and kere um, traditions. So kitiv means that which is written, and kere is that which is spoken. So what that means is there are two traditions that are equally valid there is that which is written and that which is spoken. So there's sometimes you come across words that are actually written and you actually say a different word if it's publicly um, publicly read. And they're not very different, but what it's actually doing is it's 
preserving two traditions that are equally valid. Um, so the kitiv is actually written without vowels, and the kare is in parentheses with vowels. Um, you also have preserved the patuha and the setuma sectional um, spaces. Let's see. So there's a closed section, and then I believe on the other page I pointed out an open section of lines, as you would find in a uh, standard synagogue scroll. Um, the, the text doesn't exactly follow the layout of the synagogue scroll because this is, this is a book. This is not a scroll. Um, the Hebrew letters are used for verses on the side, so it does follow the Hebrew verse ordering uh, as far as chapters, chapters and verses. There's a few differences between the, the Christian divisions. Um, you'll also find scribal notes in here, uh, such as the Ten Nekudot and other things that are preserved scribal traditions that actually um, they, they convey more meaning, kind of a little bit of a lost meaning in some senses of the text. So I wanted to uh, mention those things. And as I say, it's, it's a good solid Hebrew text in that, for instance, uh, this, the scribal tradition is that we know that there are 304,805 letters in the Torah. Well, in this edition, you will find 304,805 letters. So if you are interested in looking at Torah codes or some other things where you're actually counting letters or gematria where you're actually checking the values of words, this is a good text that you can literally do that and, and get the, the traditional um, results, <laughs> if you will. So at the back of the Tanakh, both editions, both the, the three volume and the single large volume, we have an appendix with four sections, um, A being timelines covering uh, the, the genealogy of Adam through Jacob, the flood, the timeline of the era of the judges, the monarchy and the Babylonian exile, um, B being charts, the 70 nations, Abraham's family tree, the 10 trials of Abraham, uh, the family trees of Jacob and Esau, the offerings and their procedures. There's multiple charts on the offerings and their procedures. They're very extensive and they're very detailed. Um, a chart on the census, the Levite family tree, the Kohanim family tree, and the Musaf offerings, a chart of the 48 prophets and seven prophetesses. Um, section C is illustrations. Uh, we have the tabernacle items, the priestly vestments, um, the signs of kosher animals, uh, the third temple diagram from Rashi's interpretation, and in section D we have maps. Um, beyond that there's an index of names and places and such that's uh, kind of standard. So uh, back to the three volume set. Um, it's actually very nice, very, very convenient to be able to take just the Torah with you if you're wanting to study that, or just the prophets, or if you're interested in reading uh, Tehillim Psalms, you can take just a small book like that with you. Um, the page numbering is the same across, across the volumes as it would be in a single volume. So each volume doesn't start out with page one. It continues with the same page numbering. Um, if we look at Hoff Torah portions, they're, they're going to tell you in the Hebrew a page number, and they're going to have Sephardi and Ashkenazic uh, uh, traditions as to what the, the Hoff Torah portion is. Um, there will be a line along this edge of the Hebrew that actually tells you where to read. Um, so basically that's a, that's a rundown of the Art Scroll Edition. If you have any other questions, you can leave a comment. And uh, if you're interested in purchasing one, as I say, I have links directly to Amazon in the description at the bottom of the video.